Color correction can make or break your videos, and if done properly, your videos will look a whole lot more professional and a lot more pleasing to the eye. As you progress in your filmmaking or content creation journey, you may be interested in color correcting your videos. So today I'm going to share my non-scientific tutorial on how to color correct your videos properly. But there are a couple things we need to know before we get started. First, we need to understand the difference between color grading and color correction. Color correction is the process of grading colors in a video to get them to what they should look like. So basically like the correct exposure, the correct contrast, and white balance. Whereas color grading is the process of grading colors in a video to a more stylistic look. Now, color grading can be completely subjective, but there are some basic steps to color correction that are accepted across the board, and that's what we're gonna cover today. Now, the next thing that we're gonna need to know before we get started is the types of footage that we're gonna be using whenever you're color correcting or color grading. So usually you're working with log footage or like a flat color profile, and generally a log video is like a flat video with little to no saturation, where the highlights and shadows are compressed, which gives you a ton of information to work with in post-production. Now, if you're interested in more information about log and log video because it can get really deep. Harv from Harv Video Audio Stuff has a great video about it and I'll link it below. Now when filming in a log format, make sure you're filming at the correct exposure because you don't want to be blowing details out in the highlights or losing detail in the shadows. To tell if you're correctly exposed in camera, your camera should have a waveform or histogram tool to help you visually see where your exposure lies. So make sure everything is like somewhat in the middle of the waveform. Like I said, this is a non-scientific tutorial, but it should get you to where you need to go. If you end up going a little bit over or a little bit under in each direction, I have a cool little trick for you coming up. So we're gonna be working with three different clips today and all of these were shot on my Sony a7S III and S-Log III. This is to show you different environments and different situations that you might be running into when filming. Now today I'm gonna to be color correcting in Final Cut Pro, but you can use all this information in any editing software. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's get started. So you're gonna open up your editing software. I'm in Final Cut Pro 10, and that brings us to step one, preparation. Now usually whenever I color correct my footage, it's at the end of the editing process. So when I have all of the footage uploaded on the timeline and cut and ready to be color corrected, I'll start by adding color correction layers. So basically the layers mean that whatever you change before in one layer affects the layer afterwards. So this will make a lot more sense in a little bit. So I'll start by adding a color wheel layer. I prefer that over color board. And then I'll go in and I will add a mask layer. And then I'll add a custom LUT layer. This will make a lot more sense in a little bit. Then I'll add another color wheels layer. Then a hue saturation or HSL curve layer. Then I will add a sharpening layer. And the reason why I do this is because in camera, I actually turn down my sharpening because this gives me the most control in post-production and anything you can do beforehand to give you the most control is honestly the best thing you can do. So I like to add about 0.5 to one sharpening. And then finally to top it all off, I'll add another HSL curve layer. And this is the layer tree. And another thing I like to do, and this is a really cool tip, is just to basically save this as an effects preset so that all you have to do is drag and drop this on all of your footage whenever you're ready to start color correcting and it saves you a ton of time. So if you're using Final Cut, you can go down to the bottom and click Save Effects Preset. Name it whatever you like. I just named it Base, which I already have one. You click Save. So then you'll have it now for all the footage you use in the future. Now, once you've added all your layers, made your presets, and you're ready to move forward, one very important thing that you need to do when color correcting is you need to show your scopes. Basically, scopes are just a visual way for you to see what's going on in your image. So in Final Cut, you're gonna go up to View, Show in Viewer, and then Video Scopes to make sure you have these open. Always have the RGB Parade and the Vector Scope open. And to do that in Final Cut, you're gonna go to View, you're gonna click the one that allows you to see two of them, and then you're gonna go here and click Vector Scope, and then here and click RGB Parade and Waveform. And that allows you to see exactly what I'm seeing. We're gonna get into these in a moment, but there's a lot more videos out there on the internet that can explain these a little bit more. But essentially, when you're color correcting, you need to be using these. So, all right, you have everything ready. Let's go on to step two. Step two is converting your log footage. So your camera manufacturer will supply you conversion LUTs for your specific log profile. And these conversion LUTs will basically convert your log footage into Rec. 709, which is the standard color gamut or space that most professionals use, which basically means that it takes your your flat footage, your boring, unsaturated, uncontrasty footage, and adds color and contrast to it. That's my least scientific way that I can explain that. And like I said, in my case, I'm using the A7S III and I'm using S-Log III. But one thing to note is that for my conversion LUTs, I'm actually not using Sony's conversion LUTs. I use the Phantom LUTs by Joe Famolaro. Hopefully I'm saying your name right, because I just prefer the way the color looks over Sony's. Um, I'm not affiliated with him at all. I'm not sponsored by him. I mean, it's like a shameless plug for him, but just I'm putting them in the description below. If you have a Sony, these are the LUTs you need to use. So just go check those out. And honestly, they're the best LUTs I've ever used in my life. You're going to go on your clip. You're gonna to go to custom LUT, and I'm gonna use A7S3, S-Log3, 
neutral, which is the basic conversion LUT. So once the LUT's applied, you're gonna see a huge difference in the before and after. That took that boring, unsaturated, bland image and made it look so much more colorful and so much more contrasty. Hopefully that's a word. But like I said earlier, if you messed up your footage but didn't completely destroy it, that little layer before the custom LUT layer and draw mask layer allows you to affect what's going into the custom LUT layer. So whatever you change beforehand can affect after. But for me, I kind of shot this shot exactly where I want it. A lot of people might say it's under exposed but since i'm in a studio environment i can still have a lot of control because as you can see in the rgb parade we have a lot of room to work with and basically in the rgb parade what's at the bottom is zero which that's where your shadows lie and anything below zero will be crushed and then at 100 is where your highlights lie and anything above that will be blown out so you want to stay in between and then when filming like i said film at the correct exposure you want everything to be somewhere in the middle within reason. But as you can see here, we have a lot of room to work with. But let's just say, for example, I shot this footage completely overexposed like this. I could go into that color wheels layer and bring everything down to about right there. And then if you look at the before and after, it's a huge difference. So this layer beforehand can give you a lot more control of your image before it actually goes into the LUT. Anything you change after won't really necessarily affect the LUT, it'll just affect whatever you have after the LUT. So you want everything to be where you want it to be beforehand before you start adding more contrast. So I mean, we have the image kind of where we want it to be and we can move on to step three, which is adjusting your white balance. And this is a very important step. And adjusting the white balance is basically where we adjust the white in the image to be pure white. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that mask layer and we're gonna draw a circle or square or triangle around something white in the image. And in this case, I use a white sheet of paper, which is a really good tip for anybody out there that's on production or if you're just filming yourself. Before you start filming and after you click record, throw up a white piece of paper, but they also make like professional cards for this and I'll link those below. This will allow you to have something white in the footage to be able to make your process so much easier after the fact because you have something to reference when adjusting your white balance as well as your exposure. So once you have the white part of the image selected, you're gonna see in the vector scope over here, this little white line and that little dot in the middle right under that white line represents pure white. And so what we're gonna wanna do is get that line to be directly in the middle, which represents pure white. So what you'll do is you go to color wheels one and go down to temperature and tint. These are things that we can adjust to bring that to the middle. So what you're gonna wanna do in my, in my situation, I'm gonna really bring that tint over just a little bit. I might need to go to like negative 1.5. And that brings it somewhere in the middle and let's see what the before and after looks like. So it added a little bit more green to the footage, but honestly looks a little bit more balanced. Now, like I said earlier, it's easier when you have something white in frame. So before you start filming, just throw that white card up and it will save you so much time in post-production along with a very important step, which is setting your white balance and camera to the situation that you're in. That could be daylight, cloudy, sunny, tungsten, anything or in the situation that you're in, set it to that. Usually when you're outside, it's daylight. When you're in the shade, it's shade. There are plenty of videos out there on this subject, but it just keeps your image at one white balance versus using auto white balance, which can fluctuate and not be as accurate. That can make the color grading process and color correction process very difficult after the fact. Now we've come a long way from before and after. You could leave it like this and it'll be passable, but if you wanna take it a step further and make it look even better, then keep watching because we're not done here. And that brings us to step four, which is adjusting the contrast. So what you'll do is you go to that second color wheels layer after the LUT, make sure it's after the LUT. <laughs> and as you can see, we have a lot of room in the shadows and highlights in the scopes. So I like to take my highlights, bring them up, as you can see, this red is a little bit overexposed, but that's that light in the background. I'm looking more so at these. And then I'll bring my shadows down right to where they're basically clipping. And that looks great. My midtones are at a good spot, but what you can do is you can kind of brighten them up just a little bit more if you want to. But I like the contrast look. I think it looks good. That simple adjustment took this and brought it to this. And already that is amazing. It looks a lot more contrasty, a lot more poppy, and it just kind of brought out the image even more if that makes sense. But yeah, it basically looks a whole lot better. Now, after we've done the contrast adjustments, and if there's a subject or human or alien or anything in the shot that resembles a human, I like to check where the skin tones are and adjust if needed. The Vectorscope has a very helpful tool called the Skin Tone Indicator, which you can toggle here. And it can show you where your skin tones should be in an image. Skin tones, as a rule of thumb, should lie in or around this line right here. Depending on the ethnicity of the subject, it can fluctuate, but this, like I said, is just a good rule of thumb to get you to the right place. So to adjust the skin tones, we're gonna use the Hue Saturation Curve Layer. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that mask and bring it over to the person's skin tones in their face. It's my face. 
you want to kind of avoid the lips because they can be a little bit pink and you kind of really want to focus on the full kind of like breadth, I guess, of the person's face. And as you can see, we're a little bit to the right of that line, which is totally fine. But what you'll do is you go to that hue saturation curve and you're gonna go to hue versus hue. Take that little dropper tool and drag it over the face. And you're gonna see this little red dot pop up. Then from there, you can adjust that up, which will make me look a little bit purple or down, which can make me look a little bit green and bring it to where that's right on the line. I like a little bit past it. So right there. So another tip too in the vectorscope is that the further out this line goes represents the more saturation and the further in represents least saturation. So this is already around 30% saturation. It's kind of hard to tell, but you want it in this area. But you can also, if you want to, click on the hue versus saturation curve, click on that dropper, and then click on the face to be able to bring up another point to adjust the saturation. And you can go crazy if you want it to be super red or desaturated if you need to. And as you can see, it kind of falls closer to that line. I kind of want it to be kind of where it is, but let's see, maybe a little bit more saturated. Let's see what the before and after looks like. It's a very, very, very slight adjustment sometimes, but it can really make a huge difference in the way that your image looks. And lastly, the last thing that I do to clean up the image is I add another, after the sharpening, is I add another hue saturation curves layer and consider this like i said the very 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 top layer everything you do before this from here on out should be under this layer what i'll do is i'll open it up and i'll go to luma versus saturation and i'll do one of these numbers right here which basically turns down the saturation in the shadows and turns down the saturation in the highlights to make the image look a lot more natural because you essentially don't want any color in those areas and by simply doing that you might not be able to tell a difference but it makes the black on my shirt look a little bit less blue. Hopefully that makes sense, but it can really help you out if you're making your own custom LUTs or you're getting really creative. Like I said, consider this the top layer. So here is the final image that we've been working with. Here's what it looked like before. Here's what it looked like after the white balance and then after the contrast adjustments. And as you can see, it's a huge difference. So let's take what we learned from this and put it into another clip. In this clip, we have me standing in front of a window and we're gonna take that base correction layer that we did, drag it over top. I'm gonna to add my conversion load onto it. And this looks great, it's a little green. I'm gonna draw the mask around the white piece of footage. I'm gonna adjust that temperature a little bit, bring it to the middle. Hopefully this looks good, I didn't really mess with these beforehand. <laughs> now that's the before and that's the after. All right, let's go forward to whenever I'm holding my cat. Here's me holding my cat. And honestly, I filmed this at a good spot, so I don't really need to mess with the before layer, but I'm gonna adjust that contrast just a little bit because I have a lot of room. So I'm gonna bring down those shadows a little bit, almost crushing, bring up those highlights. I can kind of overexpose it just a little bit because I really don't need any information outside the windows and I wanna brighten up my face and my cat a little bit. And then I'll bring down the mid-tones a little bit to make it more contrasty. And wow, dude, look at that before and after, that's crazy. Here's before and here's after, and that image just pops so much more, it's crazy. All right, the last thing we'll do is we'll check the skin tones. So like I said, avoid the lips, there's Leo's face. My cat's name is Leo. All right, here's my skin tones. We're actually right on the line, so it looks pretty good. There's the face, let's adjust those skin tones. And then the saturation, bring it up some. Let's see how that looks. So here's before and here's after. Brought a little bit more pink to my face. I personally like that. I think it looks good. Then lastly, we'll do that little saturation thing and the HSO curves at the end. And then there you have it. This is what it looks like before. And this is what it looks like after. All right, let's try that one more time on this scene of my wife in her office. This is a little bit different of a lighting setting. We have some natural light coming from the window again, but we also have light coming from her computer and it's a lot darker of an environment. So let's see what happens. So we're gonna take that base layer, drag it over, do the same thing before, add that LUT that we like. And that looks awesome already, but it's a little dark. So I'm going to go to that color wheels layer before. Bring it up just a little bit. And I think that's a good spot to be in. And then I think I have a white thing. Yep, I have the sheet in the image. So I'm going to draw a mask around that like we did before. And it already looks a little blue. Yep. So here we go. Color wheels one. And wow, that looks so much better. But the contrast needs to be adjusted a little bit. So I'm gonna bring down the shadows some, bring up the highlights just a little bit, and then bring down some of those mid-tones. And that already looks a whole lot better. And I think personally that looks good. Like I said, this is a really difficult lighting environment, but honestly, this footage looks good to me. 
And as you can see in the before and after, we've come a long way. Now, like we said, check the skin tones. Let's get that mask going. Um, we'll go right here. That's good. It has her hand in it, a little bit of pink right there. And we're right on the line. Still like a little bit to the right. I think the saturation is honestly fine where it is. So you might not be able to tell the before and after because we barely adjusted it, but yeah, it just brought a little bit more pink to her face. And yeah, look at that. There's a before and after. It looks so much better. So now we basically have understandings of the basics of color correction, which brings me to step six, which is getting creative. Now you can take these tips and get really creative by building off of these principles. For example, instead of a basic conversion LUT, use a creative conversion LUT. It's essentially the same thing as we used before, but with a little bit of a creative style to it. So we'll go back to my original footage that we used of me. And instead of that neutral LUT, let's do a Utopia LUT. To see it adds a lot more blue to the footage. And then we'll just kind of run that back. We're going to check the white balance. Bring the mask over the white balance card. And here's the before and after. And then now we're gonna check the, the contrast a little bit. Looks good to me. And then finally, I'm gonna adjust the skin tone. And all right, here's a comparison between the creative conversion LUT and the standard conversion LUT. And these creative conversion LUTs can just help you add that little bit of creative flair to your footage. Or you can even create your own stylistic looks by using that natural LUT and then adjusting the color wheels after the custom LUT layer to get it to the look you're going for. So let's add that iconic teal and orange look to this video. So what you're gonna wanna do is add another color wheels layer right before that last hue saturation curve layer. You're gonna go into it and let's just bring some teal into those shadows some orange into those highlights. And then Final Cut has this cool thing, it's called Mix. So if you don't wanna go fully all in, you can kind of bring it to around, let's say like, let's go halfway, perfect. And then let's run back through those checks and balances, draw the mask, find the white piece of paper in the beginning, make sure the white balance is good. So right now we're a little too orange, obviously, because we added orange to it. And then we're gonna go to the skin tones, make sure the skin tones look good. Here is that teal and orange look before we made these corrections, and here's after. So that teal and orange look is honestly really easy to make, and when you know these basic principles, it allows you to get really creative without destroying your image. So there you have it. I hope this helps any of you out there that are new to color correction or new to making videos. And you can take these basic principles and build off of them as you grow in your journey as a creative, and just keep learning as you go. And please make sure to like and subscribe if you found this video at all helpful. I would really appreciate it. This is like my first YouTube video, so yeah, let me know how I did. That'll do it. Catch you guys in the next one.